I'm Jenna. And I'm Sam. And you're listening to Cincinnati Zoo Tales. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Cincinnati Zoo Tales. I'm Sam. And I'm Jenna. And today we are getting wild. It's <laughs> not too wild, just wild enough as far as podcasts allow. Because we are talking with Shay Miller, who is our manager of Wild Encounters, and she runs a wild program we have here at the zoo. I am going to count how many times I can say wild at this podcast, and if you write in to us and let us know, you'll win a prize. So, Shay, welcome! Welcome to Cincinnati Zoo Tales. Thanks, Sam. What a great intro. <laughs> Sam's <laughs> intros make me happy You every never know time. where they're going to go. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for being here. We're excited to talk to you and share a little bit about Wild Encounters, and I think it's one of the coolest things we do at the zoo, and we do it really, really well. I think it's taken over a little bit of, you know, the zoo world, but I think we're one of the the starters of it and do it really well. Yeah, and if you've come to visit the Cincinnati Zoo, you have probably interacted with a Wild Encounters person. Um, somewhere in some capacity, you may have not even noticed that you just thought, hey, that's a zookeeper or that's somebody, you know, that's helping me out and that you didn't know that they were actually part of this program. So not that it's a hidden program. They just have so many different capacities that they operate in around the zoo. So, um, Shay, maybe you could expand a little bit more about yourself, your story on how you came to Cincinnati Zoo, and then we can get into the nitty gritty on everything that the Wild Encounters program offers. Yeah, absolutely. So I um, started here at the zoo in 2016 as an um, education volunteer, actually. Mm. And I worked in the Discovery Zones carts for about six months um, before finding out about the Wild Encounters department. And I was seeing folks bring out ambassador animals, and I thought that was really cool, and I really wanted to be a part of that. Um, so I volunteered with Wild Encounters for another six months, and then I convinced them to hire me in the beginning of 2017. Um, so I started in as a staff person in 2017, um, handling animals, doing all kinds of cool chats and things like that. Um, eventually became a supervisor of the Wild Encounters Department and helped Sam lead behind the scenes tours, which Yay! was super fun. <laughs> um, and then most recently, I accepted the position of manager of Wild Encounters Department. So I've been in that role since November of 2020, um, and I love it. Congrats. Thanks. Yes. What, what Shay left out is that I fired her from behind the scenes he did. experience. <laughs> Not really, no. It was, it was a COVID casualty, and she rose like a phoenix from the ashes and came back as a manager once we were able to start opening up our programs again. Yeah. I mean, it ended up, you know, going up for you, because a COVID casualty is unfortunate, but the fact that you got to come back and you were promoted to full time, what are the odds? Yeah, you know? it was awesome. Yeah. So, so Wild Encounters. Yes. <laughs> fun name. It sounds like a fun, I, I know it's a fun program, but can you explain a little bit of what this program does throughout the zoo? Yeah, for sure. So um, one of the zoo's big things is we really want to get visitors close enough to care. Um, and we, some zoos do that with signs, which is awesome, but we have found that a lot of people don't read signs always. Um, so uh, we find it's better to have a human there instead of a sign. So our team staffs any area where an, a human can interact with an animal without a barrier. So places like our giraffe feedings, our goat yard, um, the Galapagos tourist encounter, and then newly Rue Valley. And we help to facilitate really safe experiences as well as giving guests a way to learn all about the animals that are in that habitat. Um, another part of Wild Encounters, which is super cool, is the random animal encounters. So when you're walking through the zoo on a normal day, you may pop into the Night Hunters building and all of a sudden you are greeted by a ball python um, that one of our handlers has out with them. Uh, they'll give you a little bit of a spiel about that animal, ways that you can help that animal, um, and you may even get a chance to touch that animal, which is really cool, really unique to our zoo. It's funny, you said random animal encounters. Back in 2009, I was an intern just starting off at the Cincinnati <laughs> Zoo, and that was my first internship here, and it was called Wild Encounters because we, or sorry, Random Encounters, <laughs> now it's Wild Encounters, because we randomly would come up, come outside with a snake, an owl, a hedgehog, and people could randomly meet them, and it was the pilot year. It was kind of crazy, a bunch of us, you know, college students or recent grads out there with animals and trying to figure out the best way to interact safely like <laughs> having a hedgehog how do you hold it and also let somebody touch it and you know all different things and it was a lot of fun and I think it's one of the best things that we do here at the zoo because it really does bring people close enough to care and I think we have the opportunity to let people touch animals actually brings them and not literally it literally brings them Very close, close enough to care yeah but it can like really I don't know, 
make their their visit extra special and give them that wow moment. Yeah, for sure. Especially when we have um, some folks that are, maybe are scared of snakes or scared of lizards and things like that. Um, sometimes getting a chance to meet one in a safe, you know, environment that's facilitated by one of our staff people can really help them get over that fear. And that's that's a huge wow moment for our staff too. We love it. Do you yeah. have any wow moments in mind right now? I put putting you on the spot Ooh. that kind of stand out to you, or you maybe made a difference what somebody thought. Yeah, I w one thing that always stands out to me. It just it almost gives me like goosebumps. Is I you know I remember when I was a little kid and coming to the zoo or going to the, the museum and asking a million questions of the people that worked there. I thought that they were just the coolest people ever, right? Like I wanted to be them when I grew up, um, and now I am that person every day, and I get to you know, meet kids that want to be, to, that want to work at zoos one day and they ask me all kinds of questions. Um, and I've met little kids that are like, my mom is so scared of the snake. I don't want to yes. like my, you know, she doesn't want me to touch the snake. She's too scared of the snake. Um, so going through, you know, why snakes are important to us and why we need to have them around and why this snake in particular is not going to hurt you. And it's not, it shouldn't be scary. Um, and then a lot of times the kid will touch the snake and then sometimes the parent will also touch the snake. Yes, those and are that the is best. always the biggest wow moment for sure. Yes, it's always hard when somebody comes up and they're like, oh, oh no, they didn't see yeah. the snake at first. <laughs> and they're like, and they don't want to see it. And they want to keep walking. They're like, it's okay, I promised. You. Would you like me to tell you about it? And then they just get a little bit closer and a little yeah. bit closer. And yeah, that's one of the coolest things for sure. That's, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. And if you see these random animal encounters around the zoo, I, I promise that we're not trying to surprise you. It's supposed to be a surprise appearance, but you're not going to turn a corner and be like face to face with a snake. You know? <laughs> yes. You, we do position ourselves so you have time to see the animal if you are a little bit hesitant, you know, so you can approach at your own, own accord. And we talked with Aaron and Sarah on past episodes about the interpretive department. So the animals that you guys are working with live and are cared for by the interpretive keepers. And they're all animals that are handled from a young age or enough behind the scenes where they're comfortable with humans. So we're not going to take an animal out that might somewhat be dangerous because it's scared or shy or something. We're going to make sure the animals are comfortable so they're safe for the people too. Absolutely. Yeah, our handlers work with these animals really closely every day and they get to know you know, what, what their normal behavior is like. So if they see anything that would be abnormal or weird, um, they would know that the animal maybe doesn't want to go out that day. Um, so they keep a really close bond with those animals so that they always make sure that these encounters go go really well and really safe. And I think guests are very aware of that too. Yeah. The most com I want to say one of the most common questions is, will it bite me? You know, that's that's a question. And Shay, yeah. what, what's a response to so that? So our favorite <laughs> response is that everything with the mouth can bite you, but, and there's a huge but there, um, you know, our animals are really used to these types of encounters. Um, we make sure that our staff is really well trained to read all of their behaviors, and this is a really safe encounter for you to participate in. So... And well, gonna, anything with a mouth can bite. Uh, technically, I have a mouth, but I'm not going to bite anymore. <laughs> You're not going to have somebody touch the head of the snake. Right. <laughs> touch the back or the tail or, or that sort of thing. It is funny. Like I mentioned, the first year, random animal encounters. It was a bunch of interns basically running it and some volunteers. <laughs> and there was a lot to learn. But it was the coolest thing because I actually got to hold and handle an animal. Whereas an intern, I did half days in Jungle Trails. Yeah. I wasn't able to actually interact with the, most of those animals because they are dangerous and you have to be really safe and follow all these protocols. So they aren't going to stick an intern, let me train a bonobo <laughs> on my first day, you know, and that's what got me into educating. And I think one of the coolest things about the wild encounters is we have really great interpreters and people that are out there educating people. And, you know, you can come up and ask all sorts of questions. Like you mentioned, you guys know them really well. So they have personality stories and all sorts of awesome facts about them and so I think it's really cool that we've come so far from interns to now we have a full you know yeah staff <laughs> I mean shout out to Caitlin Messerschmidt she started that yes. program back in 2009 and I think it's just come a, a, a really far away yeah we have um about anywhere between 15 and 20 staff members now um we this year we have five interns and then we have a, a team of about 60 volunteers so it wow. is a really big group of interpreters that get out and make these me memories with the visitors. Will that happen this year with COVID? I know we didn't get to have as many encounters. 
Yes, so we are really hopeful. So we are starting to bring them back slowly in ways that are um, safe for our animals and for the visitors and staff as well. Um, so we are determining areas like the Mahali, which is the, the circle of rocks out in our Africa habitat, um, places where there's a little bit of physical distance um, so we can start rolling those out again. The animals are getting their practice too. We have our team of staff. They come in and they socialize the animals, which is when they get animals out behind the scenes so they, you know, remember what it's like to be out and be touched and things like that. Um, and we take the animals sometimes to like a surprise roll call with another team here at the zoo. Um, so they're still getting their practice, but our staff will need practice as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. What What's the process of somebody that's never maybe handled an animal before yeah. and then they're suddenly hired in to be this interpreter position of wild encounters and, you know, they're going to be handling snakes and skinks and lizards and sometimes birds. What's the process of getting somebody trained? on animals like that? That is a great question, Sam, and it's kind of a constantly <laughs> evolving process. Um, one thing that we like to get out of the way really quickly is to train everybody on hissing cockroaches. <laughs> we have a few colonies of Madagascar hissing cockroaches, which um, for a lot of folks, even if they're totally fine with snakes, they might be a little bit iffy about bugs. Um, plus, these are really big bugs and they really like grip onto your hand and things like that. So we start everybody out with hissing cockroaches. We, you know, we'll have them, we'll put them right in your hand. Um, you get used to what they feel like, things like that. Once you're totally comfortable on those hissing cockroaches, um, we'll move you on to a set of what we call tier one animals, um, which are animals that are really easy to handle. Um, they have, a lot of them have been in the program for a really long time. So we have some ball pythons, some that are even older than me or you, Sam. Um, <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> and then we have um, blue tongue skinks and box turtles. And once you're really familiar with those sets of animals, you could start moving up to some of our higher tiered things, like um, maybe a tawny frog mouth or a barn owl. What's a tawny frog mouth? A tawny frog mouth is the grumpiest looking bird in the world, <laughs> but they are amazing ambassadors. They're native to Australia. Um, they look a lot like an owl. They've got really cool color um, coloration, but they are actually not related to owls at all. They're closely related to whippoorwills. Um, they just got voted the most Instagrammable bird. So <laughs> um, if you ever see one here at the zoo, you'll probably think it's an owl right off the bat, but um, they have a really wide mouth and they don't have any talons, so they've got really soft feet. There was a meme that was going around of a tiny frog mouth, I think, earlier this year, and it was an adult and one of the young with it. And the, the adult's like, <laughs> looks as grumpy as can be. Like, don't bother me. And the kid it's with is just, it has its, like, mouth open, like, smiling, like, looks like it's smiling and, and super happy. And I do say that baby tiny frog mouths are my favorite specific animal because they look like cotton balls. And when they open their mouth, their mouth is so big, it looks like their whole head pops off. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Speaking of owls, I think they're the best animal to interpret with. They were always my favorite. There's yeah. so much to talk about, all their adaptations. So do you have a favorite animal? Is it, I mean, you mentioned the tawny frog mouth, but is there a favorite one to interpret with or that you like to bring out and interact with? Yeah, it's with? funny that you say the owls because I feel the same way. We have a barn owl named Jasper that I work with a lot and I love bringing him out. Um, I think it's really impactful for me to bring him to appearances, especially here in Cincinnati, um, because they're native here. You can drive right through the city and find them um, living and perching in all kinds of pl cool places. Um, so when I talk about them with people that live around this area, a lot of the things, that the, a lot of the actions that they can take at home actually can help barn owls, like the one that they're seeing with me. So Awesome. Have yeah. you ever seen one in the wild? I saw one one time. And it was actually by UC's campus on one of the dorm buildings. No way. Yeah. So they, as much as I've heard that they are, like, they're really easy to, um, like, they, they're really adaptable and they can live in almost every environment. It's crazy to see one almost downtown in Cincinnati on a college campus. Yeah. Don't they live on all, or not, they live on six of the seven continents? Yes. yes. Yeah. They're the most widely, they're one of the most widely distributed birds in the, on the planet. Oh my gosh. I've never seen one in the wild. I've seen barred owls, but yes. not barn owls. Yeah. So. And they're the white ones that stand out and they have the really round face. If you guys have, you know, seen owls here or on TV or whatever. They're, they definitely stand out compared to other owls, I think. They do. They have a really interesting call. They almost, like, screech. Um, some parts of the world, they call them ghost owls. And for a yeah. lot of people, they think that's where, like, the ghost stories came from. Um, because when they fly overhead, it's, like, a big white flash. And their their call is, is scary enough that if you were not <laughs> expecting it, it would definitely be... It would send a chill down your, your spine, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Maybe my house isn't haunted. It's just owls. Hopefully. <laughs> just, uh, Do you have a haunted no, house? I don't, but... Oh, I, well, you wouldn't I see any mice. <laughs> That's a good thing. I think it's interesting, uh, Jenna, that you talked about how you got your start here at the zoo um, with the Wild Encounters program. And I think that's why, like, you know, I really love the Wild Encounters program is that 
it gives a really great opportunity for people coming out of school. Like I'm sure you guys have talked to folks that are zookeepers and things like that. And they tell you how hard it, it can be to get into this field. You know, sometimes you have to do a lot of internships or have a lot of experience coming in. Um, and Wild Encounters gives folks that first chance to dip their toes in the water of working in the zoo. Um, most of our staff are folks that are either brand new out of college um, or maybe have only worked in zoos for a really short amount of time. Um, so it gives them a great jumping off point. Yes, exactly. I was thinking about talking a little bit more about that too because I mentioned I was in Jungle Trails and it was amazing, but I liked interacting with the animals and even the people. And it can be exhausting being out yes. there and talking <laughs> to people all the time. And obviously I leaned a little more towards the animal care side of things now that, and I'm a zookeeper now, but I was the first ever supervisor for random Ooh. animal encounters. Very proud of that. And went from that, you know, for a year and a half and loved it. And we were facilitating the giraffe feedings and Laura keep landing back then. Yeah. And I was making seed sticks, you know, <laughs> like, um, and it was a great time. But yeah, I think eventually I did, I still really like interacting with the public. And I think it gave me such a good, um, well-rounded, you know, career experience where I can now feel comfortable talking to the public because that takes a skill set too to it be does. brave enough and yep. like confident in your facts and just being able to handle, you know, 50 people running at you while you are holding a, an owl like that. You have to be able to, you know, read an animal's behavior and get to know them that way. But it sets people up so much for animal care, you know, to become a zookeeper. There are so many people here at the zoo that started out in Wild Encounters. Yeah, and, and in zoos all over the country. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. So it is a great spot, and you can find out kind of, do you want to go the education, educator, interpreter route, or would you like to be a zookeeper? And maybe it's a little of both, and that's what I think zookeeping is turning into. Yeah. There's a lot more of that. But yeah, it's a great way to get your start here at the zoo and and figure out, yes, if you want to work with animals or not. Yeah, it is. Um, so you will... Don't get me wrong, there is a little bit of poop cleaning, but um, <laughs> yeah. a lot of it is like what Jenna said is interpreting with visitors and, you know, spreading your knowledge. Um, I like to say like with a lot of the keeper departments and the zookeepers, um, they tend to learn a lot about a specific type of animal or maybe like specific region of animals and things like that. And Wild Encounters, we tend to learn a little bit about a lot of animals yes, <laughs> so, so yeah. that we can, because we may be over by the cougars doing a cougar chat and someone may ask us a question about the kangaroos and our staff, since they are the front facing part of the zoo, um, we do ask that they know at least a little bit about everything. That's a good point. We haven't talked about the chat. So you guys, are you bringing chats back this year? We have started slowly bringing them back. So right now we are doing kind of impromptu chats where um, if you are in the right place at the right time, you might see one of our Wild Encounters interpreters doing a chat. Um, we don't have them scheduled or on like the map or on the zoo today quite yet because we don't want to, we're not ready for those big crowds that sometimes those chats bring in. Um, but we do hope to bring those back in full force here soon. Great. So yeah, tell us a little bit, what are the chats you've done in the past or what can yeah. people expect at a chat? Yeah, so um, we have done chats at the Cougar Habitat, um, the Hippo Cove. Um, we do chats at Glaucos Tortoise. We've done Black Rhino chats. Pretty much any large animal here at the zoo or even some of the small ones like Vampire Bats, we, we have a chat for it. Oh, cool. Um, we When you come to a chat and you see a staff person there or if you see it on the map and you, you are wondering what that means, a, you know, a chat, um, you show up and sometimes there is training involved. So sometimes our um, care teams might be doing training with the snow leopards or the cougars while our staff person from Wild Encounters is on the visitor side talking about what's going on inside the habitat. Um, so they're giving you information about the animal. They're telling you, you know, maybe the animal's names, how old they are, things like that. Um, a lot about their natural habitats and also some, some stuff about their conservation issues um, in the wild and then also ways that we can help them. Yeah, that's always fun. Uh, this isn't an extra paid experience or anything. Is it is it? not, no. Yeah, if you see one of those chats um, going on, feel free to jump right, at, right in. It is included in your experience. And that is, that's one of the, the, the best parts of um, walking around the zoo and seeing these chats going on because you really get the information because there's only so much information a sign can tell. So you get to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction. You get to learn about them and, and hear more, you know, formal presentation, but I say formal loosely. It's, in, it's, it's <laughs> informal. It's very much like a, 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 somebody, your best friend telling you about like this, this really cool animal. And then you get to ask even more questions about the animal too. Yeah, we, um, I like to think that our people are a little bit more fun than the signs do. <laughs> <laughs> and then you guys are doing the encounters with giraffe and goats and, and that's another way to get animal experience. Like you yeah. mentioned, somebody coming, it's a great way to get started yeah. here in so many ways. 
Um, but we're doing giraffe feedings, correct? Yes. Yard, yard yep. is open, and Glob Ghost Tortoise will be open again this year. Yeah. Yep, we just opened. We just reopened the Glob Ghost Tortoise Encounter, so that's been going on at two o'clock every day. Um, people get to come in and meet our Glob Ghost Tortoises. Weather permitting. Weather permitting. <laughs> yes, they are definitely um, one of those animals that is cold sensitive, so they're not going to be out if it's too cold. Um, the goat yard is always a huge selling point. Um, I, you know, we have really incredible animals here, but there are a lot of people that come to the zoo that would, that are ride or dies for our goats in our goat yard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Back in summer of 2019, I forget why, I was having a really hard day and I work with some really cool yeah. animals, but I was like, I'm just going to go to the goat yard. <laughs> and I walked over to the children's zoo and I went and I just sat and hung out with some goats and it really made me feel better. I don't know. There's something about them that... Yeah, if you're ever having a bad day, come come to the zoo and sit in the yeah, goat yard. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, they are therapy goats. Yeah. They are. They are just like so nonchalant. You know, they're just great around people. Do you have a favorite goat? I do have a favorite goat. Who His is... name is Leo. Oh. Um, if you come to the zoo, he <laughs> is a mostly white goat and he looks like he's almost tie-dye. He's got little black and brown spots. Um, when he was a baby here at the zoo, um, I helped train him and work with him and teach him how to paint and things like that so we have a really good relationship he has an adorable beard and he i i think that he is the cutest goat but i don't <laughs> tell the other goats that <laughs> yeah. keep it to yourself we won't tell yeah hopefully don't, don't tell him yeah hopefully he doesn't listen he is he's gonna play this yeah he's gonna play this episode on the speakers in the goat yard i knew it i knew it <laughs> <laughs> that made me think, are you guys helping out? I know in the past you've helped a little bit with the children's zoo keepers walking some of the animals around the zoo. Will that be happening? Is your team still doing that? We have not started that back for 2020 or 2021. Um, we actually have a whole, a brand new staff for Wild Encounters in 2021, oh, yeah. which is pretty wild. Um, something that happened with COVID is that a lot of, you know, folks that had been here at the zoo for a while, um, if they, they may have found other positions or moved back home and things like that. So, um, we have brand new fresh faces in Wild Encounters, which is wild. <laughs> to, are you guys counting the least. Yeah. To, we're, we're up to at least 16. Right? Yeah, they are. It is wild. Um, and that's usually something that once you're a little bit more experienced, um, you can help out with walks. Those animals are a little bit bigger. We have some sheep that are really big. Alpacas, of course, are pretty tall. Um, so once our folks get a little bit more comfortable with the smaller animals that we're working with, um, like our reptiles and birds, then they'll be trained on those animals. Okay, cool. But another wild random encounter that you might see in the yeah. future. Yeah. Alpaca walking around. And the Alpaca. children's zoo team is still walking them around. So you'll Great. see yes. yeah, goats and alpacas, llamas, pigs walking around the zoo. I think that's one thing that's super special about our zoo is that you can be in an area that necessarily doesn't have an animal habitat next to it, like maybe down in the grove where the food locations are and things like that, and you might see a, a herd of goats walk by. <laughs> <laughs> now this might be a state secret, but I'm going to ask it anyway because I want to know, are there any plans for flamingo walks anytime in the future? Ah, there might be, Sam. Okay. <laughs> so if you have been a member of the zoo for a while, if you've come to our zoo before, you may have remembered seeing a flamingo walk, um, which is where we have a flock or flamboyance of flamingos, which is what they're actually called, um, and a few of our animal handlers from our Wild Encounters team, and they may walk by with just this crazy, fun, exciting um, encounter with those flamingos. And all of our flamingos that we had in our pack before, um, they have all joined our breeding flock. Um, they are all now adult flamingos. Um, so we do have hopes to get some little flamingos back and have um, those flamingo walks again. I think they're really special. They are really cool. Everyone loves them. Everyone yeah. loves yes. a flamingo. You hear them coming, and yeah. sometimes and they're not dangerous, so no. <laughs> they'll just kind of wander where they want every once in a while, and you're like, Oh, just stand still, please. We're going to wrangle our <laughs> flamingos back onto our walk. I've been joking for years that we have like a soft close at 5 o'clock. And, you know, Thane's voice comes over the announcement and says, Hey, the Sunshine Zoo is not closed. Make your way to the exit. I just think we should let the flamingos out at 5 yes, o'clock. And they yeah. should help guide the guests back to the entrance. <laughs> I do have another state secret for you, Sam, since you brought up state Ooh. secrets. I thought that I should let everyone in on what the clickers are for. Because that's something that guests ask us all the oh. time. When you see a Wild Encounters person anywhere, whether that's at one of the stations like Giraffe Feeding, River Valley, or if they're out on an encounter, you'll see that they have a clicker in their hand, which is this little circle, and it has a little um, button that they're pressing. And you're probably like, why are they pressing buttons? Why are they keeping track of how many people <laughs> that they're talking to? Um, and that's because we want to know what our impact is on um, our visitors here at the zoo. So last year, our numbers were 800,000 visitors that our team talked to. So amongst our 20 Wild Encounters um, staff members and our 50 or so volunteers, 
they made a contact or had a conversation with at least 800,000 guests last year, which wow. is Wow, yeah, incredible. and they're bound to miss a few here and there while right, you're talking yeah. and handling an animal and clicking, and that's a huge yeah. impact. And one of the best things, that, like I said, about our zoo, I think it makes it so fun and really does bring people close enough to care. And you mentioned earlier uh, Rue Valley, which, you know, I haven't been getting out enough. <laughs> I kind of forget about it every once in a while. We have this new Rue Valley what are you guys doing down there? We talked with Ellie about, you know, starting a new yeah, habitat you know. and getting new animals, but what can guests expect as a visitor and what is your team doing and how has that been going with this new, whole new area that you have to help manage? Yeah, um, so all, all, it's a whole new area with brand new animals um, and then also our brand new staff. So we are constantly evolving that space as well. Um, our team is down there to make sure that folks have safe interactions with the kangaroos and that the kangaroos don't get in anyone's strollers or <laughs> try to get in any, any anywhere else that they're not supposed to be. Um, so our team asks visitors to stay on the, stay on the paths. Um, they'll share information about the kangaroos. Um, they can sometimes redirect the kangaroos if they are getting into a stroller. Um, but a lot of times it's a lot of the time that they're spent that is spent down there. They are just, um, chatting with folks about the kangaroos. Um, just since they are a new animal to us here in Cincinnati, people don't tend to know a whole lot about them. So um, we tell them where they're from, you know, what kind of foods that they like to eat, and also introduce them to some of the individuals as well. I all of them say, have names. Can, so. you, can you name, not that you have to name them all, but are you able to name them all? I can, can you, name can them all. Can you tell them all apart? I am not super good at telling okay. them all apart. I don't know if it was easy or hard. It is hard. Um, the gray is a little bit easier because they have ear tags. Okay. The reds are harder because the reds have ear notches. Oh, yeah. Um, so... If you're not super close to them, you it's hard to check their notches. But I'm guessing they some of them have big personalities, right? Are they oh your yeah. Favorite? yeah. Um, I think that the the reds for sure. So we have two reds, Ezard and Evander, and both of them are very personable. Um, they have huge personalities. Um, they're also pretty quick um, and frisky. So in the first thing in the morning, they tend to run around the yard. I call it that they're doing their laps or getting their steps in. Um, <laughs> and they are flying around the yard. Um, they're also sometimes the quickest to check to see what's in a stroller or maybe to cross the path. <laughs> yeah. How warm does it have to be for the kangaroos to be out? Because I know that is something people will come down there and they have the option to go inside if it's cold. But what can people... You know, so that they can plan their visit. What yeah, so um, it has to be at least 40 degrees, and that we go by the feels like temperature down there, um, so we take into account wind chills and things like that. Um, and then also because kangaroos have, you know, they have these really intricate leg structures, and it's really important that they don't injure themselves in any way. If there's any sort of, like, ice or snow or a really strong or precipitation, we probably won't have that habitat open, or they may be choosing to be inside. Um, but for most general days after, you know, well... This year it snowed in April, but <laughs> generally after April um, and through October, it's usually perfect temperatures for our kangaroos. Okay, good. Good to know. I want to know, well, we were talking about favorite animals, and I, now that I have you two in the same room, I want to know which, is, what is your favorite giraffe? Because, oh. <laughs> and I'm making gin up. Oh. oh, that's easy. Oh. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I just covered my mouth because I felt bad for the other giraffe. <laughs> I have one. I, it's easy for me, too. Yeah, okay. What's your favorite draft? My favorite is Zoe. Oh, Zoe. my favorite's Tessa. Is it Tessa? Oh. Ah. I met someone named Tessa yesterday, and I told <laughs> the first thing I came, that came out of my mouth was, we have a draft named Tessa. It's funny, one of my very best friends is named Tessa, <laughs> but I also have a best friend draft named Tessa. No. <laughs> I don't get to work with the draft quite as often these days, but that was, you know, one of my... Well, I've had many jobs yeah. here to get to where I am, and, and Tessa's been around the entire time since Aww. I started working oh, with yeah. Giraffe. There are other reasons. I think she's so smart, and she's mm -hmm. a great trainer, and she's the most beautiful, and she's she very beautiful. reliable, and she's a wonderful mother, and I could go on and on about Tessa. <laughs> I, I will say her. from a behind-the-scenes standpoint, yeah, what's Tess, your favorite? Tessa is our most reliable dress <laughs> yes, exactly. usually to come over. Um, followed by Fennessy. Fennessy's been oh, like geez. a bottomless pit lately, and little Theo's coming over now oh gosh, and, and yeah. getting braver and braver every day. So. He'll like sample a little yeah. bit from. Oh, yeah, food. and he was over there by himself the other tour. Like all of the all, all the other drafts left, and he was just there munching down. Oh, and I was that's like, fun. Yeah, Especially the little guy. You <laughs> yeah. Know? Wait. So yeah, all three of us spend time by the giraffe. So what's your favorite, Sam? Oh, that's that's a tough one. Um, I want to say Zoe, just because she's such a goofball. Okay, I was but, say, but yeah, I do well, have a sweet spot for fantasy as well. Yeah, um, my one of my first tours when I did do behind the scenes tours with Sam was a draft proposal. 
Um, where there was a couple that wanted to get, the guy wanted to propose to his girlfriend in front of the drafts, um, which is super cute, great, awesome. Um, so Sam, I think, was off that day, and I was down there doing this, this is the very first proposal I've ever done, um, and the guy gets down on one knee to propose to his girlfriend, I'm taking pictures, it's beautiful, Zoe in that moment hawked a little loogie <laughs> and there was a big green piece of slime just dangling from her mouth in the back of the photo so <laughs> not was, the timing was perfect at all yeah the, uh, the draft proposals are fun because usually that you're standing over there at the wall feeding just to set a picture up and then we'll have whoever's doing the proposing come behind the person they're proposing to and get down on one knee and then i'll say hey can you or shay will say can you turn around and for a photo and they'll turn around and see the person proposing on one knee and what happens then is they drop whatever food they're holding <laughs> and then in the background you just get this you get this person that's in complete shock and joy and happiness and then you get this giraffe looking at them like why'd you stop <laughs> where's my food I can only imagine. <laughs> the photos are fantastic it is. especially <laughs> if they're ready to eat in that moment yeah. oh my gosh yeah the other night I was closing and over at the giraffe and you feed them and you have to look up because everything we feed for giraffe is really high and I'm reaching up and Zoe comes over and just drool right into my eyeball I'm not making this up it was awful I mean oh yeah she's drooler just well, like we let guests know that's good luck <laughs> yes. that, yeah that's good luck yeah we talk we constantly tell get tell kids up at the draft deck when they're doing the feeding that um a little bit of giraffe slobber is good luck because sometimes they reach their hand back and it's just coated in, sl in giraffe slime. <laughs> I know Shay mentioned this earlier, but since we're talking about giraffe deck, she's talked about cool moments for her staff as well. And giraffe deck's such a cool one because you see kids that come up and they're just intimidated by these yeah. animals that are so tall. You know, you get 16 to 18 feet tall, their heads are gigantic. Their and heads are the same size as the kids. Yeah, right? <laughs> and, the kid, and, and the kid's like, mm, like excited, but then like maybe hugging on to mom or dad and be like, I don't know about this. But then they overcome their fear and they like they just light up and they realize like oh my gosh that was such a cool experience and like we're are their staff Jay staff are just as excited when that happens yeah. as well. We also get really excited when we see kids that have like their giraffe shirts on. Oh yeah, um, we'll have kids that have giraffe shirts on. I've had kids that are dressed in a full giraffe costume come up to feed the giraffes, <laughs> um, and they're just so excited. Um, Did the giraffe run away? Are they nervous? No, <laughs> they they. <laughs> They're just like food. This is great. Yeah, this is great food. Um, one thing that we always are on the lookout for, though, sometimes with those really tiny little guys, um, little tiny kids that are feeding, is sometimes they try to put the lettuce in their mouth instead of the giraffe's mouth. Oh, yep. yeah. You yeah. usually have there where you give them a piece of food and they immediately stress or yeah. stick it in their mouth. Or you have the vice versa where you're supposed to go up, you can walk right up, the giraffe will stick their tongue out, take the lettuce right from your hand, but then you have the kids that walk up and they just chuck it. Yes. Just, yeah. just throw it. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite stories that just... <laughs> we're getting out there, but one time I had a kid, we used to feed them rye crackers, and a little kid came up and said... Eat it, horse! <laughs> it's the bread of the cracker. I don't remember how much giraffe, but at the giraffe, it just yelled, Eat it, horse! And threw it. Like, they can't catch it in their mouth, but I don't know why they called it. It was, yeah. uh, it was a wonderful experience for me. It was very funny and very entertaining. I can bring that back up to giraffe. Yeah. Yeah. Eat yeah. it, horse. That Eat should horse. be a shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful. But yeah, your, your staff does, you know... You're the front line for the zoo, and you make so many people happy and bring, you know, so much education to everyone and give so many opportunities. So you guys are the face of the zoo, and hopefully people will get to see you this summer. It's, yes. It's kind yep. of getting normal We're again. We are, back ba up. we are back there. Yeah, we have our full team um, here at the zoo. So um, we've got our volunteers back. The zoo team started with us yesterday, <laughs> so they are back, um, and you'll see their faces around as well. Um, and we are so excited to have things you know, look it, look it up. Yes, yeah. for sure. Do you have a quiz, I Sam? have got a quiz. Ooh, a quiz. Yes, all right, here we go. So, as you know, as I'm pulling my quiz up, I do Wikipedia research, <laughs> and you never know what the quiz is going to be. No. We still have not coined a name. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping guests will help out with that sometime. But I have five questions for you. Okay. Um, and th th this is going to be a wild quiz. So Ooh. everyone's <laughs> related in a wild manner in some capacity. <laughs> so um, some of them might be like fill in the blanks or, you know, closest date or time. But we're just going to get right into it. So okay. how many novels did the author Oscar Wilde write? Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. What? 
I just want to know what goes through your brain yeah. when, you, when you come up with what you're going to ask us. Oscar Wilde. How do we? Uh, how do? How do we? It's, I'm just guessing guess. seven. Yeah. Oh, I was going to guess seven. That's crazy. Oh. Okay, Ooh. then I will go nine. Well, it's going to be the closest number, even if you go over. So Jen is closest. He actually only wrote one novel. <gasps> wow. So despite having a reputation for being a writer, Oscar Wilde only published one novel throughout his life, The Picture of Dorian Gray. Ah. Which, yeah, have you ever read that book? No. That's one I never... I, I, I read <laughs> the synopsis, you... but it's it's a classic, you know, read in, in English high school literature class. Yeah. So. I'm surprised it's only one. The cliff note. The cliff note. <laughs> yes. Okay. In what year did the wild thornberries air? Oh my gosh. Um, and if you don't know what the wild thornberries is, well, while Jenna and Shay think of their answer, it was a Nickelodeon TV show about this family called the thornberries, and they were a, uh, their, their dad, Nigel Thornberry, was a, a nature um, TV host. He's and iconic. Would, he's iconic. He would drive... I'm, I'm, I could do my Nigel Thornberry impression, but I'm going to save that for another time. Oh, man, please do. And, uh, I'm Nigel Thornberry. <laughs> <laughs> that was really bad. I um, for, like, a Halloween costume. <laughs> I would love to be Nigel Thornberry. But his daughter, Eliza, could talk to animals during yes, that show. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Oh, I'm going to say 1998. Okay. That's so crazy, because I was going to say that, too, because <gasps> okay. I was going to guess when I was 12 years old. You're both right. <gasps> Whoa! Well, let's guess what what month did it air? Oh my gosh. I'm going to say April. Okay. I'm going to say June. It was September. Ooh, that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, you know, obviously that was September a very... September <laughs> 1st. Yeah, you're channeling it. Yeah, too. our brain thinks <laughs> okay. the same way. Who were the two leading actors in the 1999 classic Wild Wild West? <gasps> I know one. Me too. I think. Isn't Will Smith one That's of what, yes. yes. Will Smith, yeah, Will Smith is the star, and he also had the song that came out with it. Yeah. Too. That's <laughs> that's that's a, yeah. Wild, wild West. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The Wild West. <laughs> and now I'm going to have to look that Now up. I have no idea who the second one is. Would we know it? Oh, you would, but I... Do you want to give us a small hint? Um, first name's Kevin. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith and Kevin Bacon. Man. <laughs> wow, well, <wild> footloose. <laughs> I have no idea. Kevin Klein. Oh, I Kevin, don't Kevin even Klein. know who that is. Okay, so all I right. Know. Some people out there are going to be offended. I by know. That shit. Sorry. Okay. No, Kevin Bacon. How old is Wild E. Coyote? Oh my gosh. <laughs> How old is he? How old is Wild E. Coyote? Like the show or like, the animal? Like his... I I just did a quick Google search. So I think this is like. From when he... The made, animal's made, age? The animal's from when he was first created. So, the di- like, the year he was created, or he yes. was this old in the show? I'm just going to say year he was created. Now I'm going to have to... I'm going to guess, like, 72. That seem- That might be really high. 67. He is 80. What?! <laughs> Yeah. What? Yeah. Wait, wait, according to the, the year according to age? the Looney Tune fan wiki site, he's eighty years old. Wow. Yeah. Did he start the show younger? Or was he? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe he stayed the same. <laughs> it was a trick <laughs> question. Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't even know. What we're I, that's I why he can't. Catch I don't trust the that. Roadrunner I don't because he's that. eighty <laughs> years old. He's eighty years old. <laughs> it's not Acme. Okay, and the last question are: Who are the two lead band members in the rock star group? Wild Stallions. What? You've never heard of Wild Stallions? No. Oh my goodness. Just tell oh, us. Yeah, just Oh my us. gosh. Wild Stallions is the band from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh. Which happens to be one of my favorite that movies. Is... Wait, I am offended and I am going to write an angry letter to both of you, which you will be receiving. So Bill S. Preston and Ted Theodore Logan are ah. the lead members of Wild Stallions. Oh, I, yes. Now I know. Wild that Stallions that brings it all back. <laughs> yeah. really. so wraps it up. Bill S. Preston, Ted Theodore Logan. Go watch the movies; they're great. Oh my. <laughs> well, that was a wild quiz. That, that was, was a wild, wild quiz. quiz. <laughs> well, Shay, is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we 
wrap everything up. Yeah, um, I, we're just really excited to see folks back at the zoo. Um, our Wild Encounters team is very eager to have those conversations <laughs> with folks. So if you see one of our people out there, don't feel... But don't be afraid to start up a conversation with them. Oh, yeah, they'll all be newbies. So yeah, they're, they're ready. Help them get their feet wet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, give them a give them a wave. Maybe try to stump them with some really tough animal questions. We love those. Yeah. Jenna, do you have a question that you need to ask Shay? I do. Shay, what can I do? That is such a great question, Jenna. Um, so that's actually something that Wild Encounters tells everyone at the end of every single chat they do is what can you do? Um, and our big thing right now is really to you know, build a better home for wildlife in your own backyard. We have so many amazing animals that live here in this area and, you know, live in the United States. So things like um, black rat snakes and tons of species of amphibians, salamanders, things like that. Um, and you can do your own part to build a better home for wildlife for them um, in your backyard, maybe by putting up something called a toad abode, which is a cute little house, um, or even a bird house or a bird feeder. Um, those are all really easy ways that you can help bring animals to your own backyard so you can appreciate them there. It's really cool to come to the zoo and get to see giraffes and elephants, but it's also really cool and super important to be able to see those animals every day in your backyard. Yeah, and those are things you can do with your family on a weekend or you yeah. know, with your kids, help them make a home for a toad. Um, I mean, I think that's awesome. But it also goes back to like the planting for pollinators. There's so many little things that you could do yep. to, to yeah. Make your... we, we have a um, a really excellent link on our website that gives you all kinds of instructions. It even has blueprints for how to build a birdhouse or a bat box. Oh yes, yeah. I love bat boxes. Yeah, great. So yeah, build a better home for wildlife. You can ask more when you come and meet somebody from our Wild Encounters team. Yep. Yes, they all have Wild Encounters on their badges. So if you look at their name tag, it should say Wild Encounters Interpreter right underneath their name. Um, and that's how you know that they're one of us. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks again for being here, Shay. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes, thank you. I'm Sam. And I'm Jenna. And this is Cincinnati Zoo Tales. <laughs>